Number 21. The expression six times the fifth root of three to the fifth times x to the of times x to the forty fifth times the eighth root of two to the eighth x <laughs> times x is equivalent to a times x to the power of b, where a and b are positive constants and x is greater than one. What is the value of a plus b? And if your eyes glazed over and like how I get it, I get it. This is one. I don't know this this. <laughs> This module has some doozies. I think it lures you into a false sense of security because uh, earlier problems, I think, are a little more straightforward. And then here at the end, it just starts slapping you in the face. This one, you need knowledge of exponents to solve easily and quickly here and exponent rules. Okay, so here's our little base concepts that are going to apply. If I have five squared times five cubed, if I'm multiplying those together, I keep the same base, I add the exponents because this would be five times five times five times five times five, five times itself two times, five times itself three times, all together is five times itself five times. All right, so multiplying, same base, add the exponents. That's our first principle. Another one is that we can change roots to exponents. So six to the power of one half is the second root of six to the power of one or the square root of six. It doesn't matter what these numbers are. This same pattern applies and you can go back and forth. So if I had seven to the power of three eighths, that bottom number becomes the root and the top number becomes the power inside. Again, you can go back and forth. This is going to come into play. And last but not least, is if you have the root of something and there's a variable underneath with the power, like say this was the seventh root of x to the power of 10, you can divide seven into 10. However many times it goes in is what you can pull out. The remainder is what you leave behind. So in this case, seven goes into 10 one time. So one X or X to the power of one comes out. The remainder is three. X cubed is what's left behind. The reason for this is because X to the power of 10 is the same as, you know, X times itself 10 times. So we could say that is X to the power of seven times X to the power of three. Because remember seven plus three is 10. So you can go back and forth by that rule we just said. So the seventh root of X to the seventh is one. Like the square root of X squared is X. The cube root of X cubed is X. Just how it works. And that X cubed is left behind. So let's try a, another one. Like if we said this was X to the power of 35, seven goes into 35 five times. So X to the fifth comes out and nothing is left behind. There's no remainder. So nothing is left under the square root. Okay. So all of those principles are all coming together into this problem. Okay, so we have six times. Oh, and also I should say, if you have square root of two X, you can split that up to square root of two square times the square root of X. Yes, that's the other one we can do. So it's really testing that we know all of these and that we're creative in our math that we can solve this. Okay, so I have six and I'm gonna start splitting things up times the fifth root of three to the power of five times the fifth root of X to the power of 45. Then I have the eighth root of two to the power of eight and I can split these up. So I'm gonna, and then we have the eighth root of X. Okay. I can simplify some of these right off the bat. It's not as crazy as it looked. First, I have the fifth root of three to the fifth. That's just three bring my six down. The fifth root of X to the 45. Remember it's how many times does five go into 45 and then that comes out remainders left behind. Five goes into 45, nine times, no remainder. So X to the power of nine. Then the eighth root of two to the eighth is just two. The eighth root of X, I'm going to use that um, property of exponents where I can convert it into an exponent from a root. So this is the eighth root of X to the power of one. So that's X to the power of one eighth. All right, now that's much, 
much easier to deal with. I can multiply my plain numbers. 6 times 3 is 18. 18 times 2 is 36. And these have the same base, so I can add those exponents. 9 plus 1 eighth is x to the power of 9 and 1 eighth. Or we can say that is the same as 73 eighths. Okay, I'm changing that. I'll tell you why in a second why I'm doing that. <laughs> Actually, eh, let's just leave it as, as it was before, 9 and 1 eighth. We'll change it in a second. Okay, so let's go back up to the top. It says this was equivalent to a times x to the power of b. Well, I've got that. I've got my a times x to the power of b. So I know what my a's and my b's are. So my a is going to be 36 and my b is going to be 9 and 1 eighth or 73 eighths. Either way, it's fine. We're going to do some conversion at some point or division in a calculator. It doesn't really matter. Just before the end. It doesn't matter when we do it, I should say. And our final question is, what is the value of a plus b? So we need to add these together. We need to add 36 and 9 and 1 eighth. When we add those together, we get 45 and 1 eighth. But because this is a problem where we have to input the solution, we cannot enter it like this. You are not allowed to enter a solution like that because it looks like 451 eighths. You'll get it wrong. Don't do it. You either have to convert it to a decimal or you have to put it in an improper fraction form. So if I put this in an improper fra fraction form, I would do 8 times 45. 8 times 45 is 360. And then we add 1 and that becomes 361 eighths because that's not an ac ac awkward, <laughs> I couldn't even say the word awkward. That's not an awkward fraction at all. So you can re enter it that way as 361, 361 eighths, or you can enter its decimal equivalent. Both are acceptable, but that is the answer. As weird as it looks. Hey guys, just a quick heads up. I've got some cool stuff coming for y'all, including a free course full of SAT tips and tricks, as well as an exhaustively complete course on everything you need to know for the SAT, both math and reading. So subscribe to the channel to get notified when that goes live. I'm also going to put it in the comments and description below as soon as it does. In the meantime, if this video was helpful or useful in any way, please let YouTube know. Comment, like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.